Section 1 of Mice and Other Poems. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by John Burlinson. Prefatory Note by Arthur Quilla Couch. If the mental attitude of any critic has ever, in his approach to a first book of verse, been conciliated by an appreciative notice from some older pen, I should say, speaking out of no little experience, that either the author was dead and the fact advertised in the preface, or, alternatively, that the critic was possessed by a gentler spirit than mine. I am sure, at any rate, that artistic work, great or small, should be sternly judged on what it is, rather than on what it promises. The late J. Cummins Carr, in the days when he wrote dramatic criticism, let loose this restive truth in a couple of short sentences. We are told that so-and-so is a promising young actor. Personally, I don't care how much he promises, so long as he never again performs. Let me, then, pass over Mr. Gerald Bullitt's verses with the simple remark that I believe in them. He himself calls them mice, no overweening title, however boldly printed. Yet mice were dear to Apollo Smintheus and his proper emblem. And let me come to the general purpose of this note. It is meant to preface a series of small volumes of verse by young writers mostly Cambridge men. That, since the war, young men in extraordinary numbers have taken to expressing themselves in verse is a plain fact, not to be denied. That they choose, as often as not, to express themselves in numbers extraordinary to us can as hardly be contested. But the point is they have a crowding impulse to say something, and to say it with the emotional seriousness proper to poetry. For my part, I love the discipline of verse, but I love the impulse better. Time will soften, I hope not too soon, lest it sugar down and sentimentalize, a certain bitterness of resentment, observable in this booklet and its next followers. But as nothing in verse is nobler than true tradition, anything is more hopeful than convention. So these booklets have been planned to give youth its chance to make spoons or spoil horns. If anyone object that the print and page over-dignify the content of any one volume in the proposed series, why, that must be a particular criticism, which cannot honestly, I think, be enlarged to blame the publisher's wish, and the care he has taken, that what pretends, however modestly, to be a work of the muse, should step forth to the public in honourable dress. End of prefatory note. Section 2 of Mice and Other Poems by Gerald Bullitt. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by John Burlinson. Mice. I see the broken bodies of women and men, temples of God ruined. I see the claws of sinister fate from the reach of whose feline paws never are safe the bodies of women and men. Almighty cat, it sits on the throne of the world, with paw outstretched, grinning at us the mice, who play our trivial games of virtue and vice, and pray to that which sits on the throne of the world. From our beginning till all is over and done, Unwitting who watches, Pursuing our personal ends, Hither and thither we scamper, The paw descends. The paw descends, and all is over and done.
End of poem. Section 3 of Mice and Other Poems by Gerald Bullet. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by John Burlinson. Rest. Here is tranquility and sylvan shade. For now, emerging from that waste of sand which was my life, I reach a fruitful glade a pool of water in a thirsty land. Your gentle soul a well of beauty is, and crystal clear the sunlit deeps thereof. And from that fountain of unmeasured bliss I draw the living water of your love. Here is the goal of all my wandering, here is oblivion of my bitterness. And here, the temple where my heart shall sing, Your eyes that light me, and your lips that bless. End of poem. Section 4 of Mice and Other Poems by Gerald Bullet. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by John Burlinson. The Strength, the Mellow Music, and the Laughter. The steadfast beauty of her eyes is balm, and in her touch there's healing for my hurt. She is unshaken as a vessel girt mid waters of unutterable calm. The years grow fragrant with her fragrance. They sipping her sweetness, leave her yet more sweet, laden with diverse colours at her feet, they shed their motley silks and go their way like withered dreams. So youth must follow after, youth that is brief and beauty that is grass, but from her gentle soul shall never pass the strength, the mellow music, and the laughter. End of poem. Section 5 of Mice and Other Poems This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by John Burlinson. Ashes. Bury the ashes. The life, the gleam of love is gone. We have killed with kisses the fragile soul of rapture. This is only the hollow husk of a dream. The bitter waking, the end thereof. Come. Bury the ashes of love. The music falters, the flame is spent, the vision is gone, the splendor faded, leaving only a pitiful, jaded half-desire and a discontent. The end of love is a weary kiss. Surely hate were better than this. End of poem. Section 6 of Mice and Other Poems. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by John Burlinson. Du bist wie eine Blume. So like a flower, so gentle, so fair, so pure thou art that musing on thy beauty brings sadness to my heart. I lay my hands in spirit upon thy gleaming hair, praying that God may keep thee so sweet, so pure, so fair. From the German of Heine. End of poem.
Section 7 of Mice and Other Poems. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by John Burlinson. Home. Five weary days, and I shall creep into the shadow of her hair, and of her loveliness drink deep and lose my desolation there, feeling her cool lips quench my own, lying so still, we shall not dare to let one murmur like a stone into the pool of silence fall. All senses will be fused in one. Peace will surround us with a wall of visible music, Moments go melodiously by, and all the stillness brim with beauty, so our hearts will whisper, throbbing fast, Must time undeviating flow, and bear this fragile moment past? End of poem Section 8 of Mice and Other Poems. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by John Burlinson. Maitre de Ballet. On a gossamer thread of light that stretches from dark to dark over the void, we giddily jig to the mad music the master makes. From the green room he calls forth sensitive puppets, live automata, and with a gesture sets us jerkily dancing the tightrope. From a seat in the stalls of the cosmic theatre, silently he watches our antics, when we call to him, Master, Master, help, we are falling. Out of the darkness comes no word, only a chuckle. End of poem. Section 9 of Mice and Other Poems. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by John Burlinson. The Grudge We grudge not those that were dearer than all we possessed, lovers, brothers, sons. Our hearts were full, and out of a full heart we gave our beloved ones. Lawrence Binion. We are of baser quality. We have been tried by fire and judged a spurious gold. We are little of soul, and yet in our pygmy way we have suffered and loved with a love that cannot be told. Being less than you, we did not eagerly quaff the cup of gall. We prayed that it might pass. We are not gods. We are pitiful human stuff, and the blood of our passion has stained Gethsemane's grass. We were not blind to the vision. We heard the call and followed, or watched our beloved steadfastly go, but our grief is naked and shivers and will not be soothed by splendid phrases or clothed in a moral glow. We cannot say for our comfort, losing them we gain a glimpse of noble, terrible heights, a cleansing, exquisite pain, a sacred grief, a dream to cherish we think of the vanished lights we think of the fine nerves shattered 
the warm blood chilled, the laughter silenced, the zest and the beauty gone, the desolation of wasted wonderful dreams that will never be lived, of work that cannot be done. End of poem. Section 10 of Mice and Other Poems. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by John Burlinson. Wedding Day. Was it for this we loved to settle down, having once paid the necessary fee, in some nice suburb not too far from town, to eat and sleep and kiss complacently, loving by rote, as decent people do? Was it for this we hungered, I and you? A lover's vows are gossamer, they say, but we have registered our mutual vow for seven and sixpence, dearest. Yesterday there was but love to bind our hearts, but now we owe it to the vicar to be good and love each other as we said we would. That promise at the altar is a link which only death can break between us two. For every time I kiss you I shall think how this would please the vicar if he knew, and we shall put our youthful dreams to bed and so live on, long after we are dead. We are made one, one mind will serve us both. Oh yes, we think Locke's novels rather sweet. In ever-living witness of our troth, you'll serve the vegetables, I the meat. Oh, happiness, it is our wedding day. Embrace me, dear, the prayer book says you may. End of poem. Section 11 of Mice and Other Poems. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by John Burlinson. Crucifixion. We wage eternal war on the losing side. Ever defeated we by the sinister foe that only pathetic piety seeks to hide in a theological costume of long ago. The goal we seek to attain will never be ours. All our hopes will end in ashes and dust. All our dreams will be dead, desolate flowers, plucked by the pitiless hand we were taught to trust. Doomed to eternal defeat in the endless strife, scornful of chance the Almighty, we worship with pride the divine, frail, terrible beauty of life on the cross of fate, incessantly crucified. End of poem. Section 12 of Mice and Other Poems by Gerald Bullitt. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by John Burlinson. Spring in Winter. My memories of you are singing birds in the green forest of my mind, where I may roam recapturing your whispered words or on a bank of glowing bluebells lie, listening forever. Spring is come again in all her glory, the erst withered trees that creaked like living skeletons in pain, defying the wind, have donned green garments, 
these new shoots these blossoms and these buds the springing grass and the sky where many colors blend my songsters by the magic of their singing heaven a moment made my thoughts of you are music which to all my spirits rue is the ineffable answer and the end End of poem. Section 13 of Mice and Other Poems by Gerald Bullitt. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by John Burlinson. The Exile. Now I return to my own land and people, old familiar things so to recover hedgerows and little lanes and meadows, the friendliness of my own land and people. I have seen a world freeze of glowing orange, palms painted black on the satin horizon, palm trees in the dusk and the silence standing straight and still against a background of orange. A gorgeous magical pomp of light and color a dream world, a sparkling gem in the sunlight, the minarets and domes of an eastern city, and in the midst of all the pomp of color, my heart cried out for my own land and people, my heart cried out for the lush meadows of England, the hedgerows and the little lanes of England, and for the faces of my own people. End of poem. Section 14 of Mice and Other Poems by Gerald Bullitt. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by John Burlinson. Sonnet for Helen. When you are very old, when in the candlelight your hair silver shoes, when by the fire you spinning sit and weaving, you will croon my verses, but in wonder, scarce believing Ronsard hymned my beauty in the days when I was fair. Never servant could you have, though half asleep she were, but would rouse herself to listen to your lyric grieving. Wake to hear my name and your glory, my achieving, my immortal praise of your beauty past compare. I shall be beneath the earth, an unsubstantial shade, where the myrtles throw their shadow will my bones be laid. You will be a squatting crony sighing by the fire, sighing for the love you scorned, recalling it with sorrow. Live, oh, live and love today. Delay not till the morrow. Gather now the roses of youth and desire. From the French of Ronsard. End of poem. Section 15 of Mice and Other Poems by Gerald Bullitt. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by John Burlinson. Song. How did we dim that wistful dream, that shy first love without caress, that breathless wonder, that supreme vision of all love's loveliness? For surely, had we parted then, kissed once with tears, and said good-bye, we had been speaking truly when we said our love could never die. Because we did a moment cling, with trembling senses cling and kiss, does it not seem a bitter thing that bliss should die of too much bliss? 
Love is a fair and fragile flower, which youth must needs, poor foolish boy, pluck greedily. Within the hour he weeps to see his withered joy. End of poem. Section 16 of Mice and Other Poems by Gerald Bullitt. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by John Burlinson. Musings. Be calmer, O my grief, be quieter. The dusk you craved enfolds us. Everywhere the twilight veil of blue-gray gossamer falls, bringing peace to some, to others, care. While thralls of pleasure, that most merciless of tyrants, hasten to his board, although his wine is gall and his fruit bitterness, come with me, O oh my grief, and let us go far from them. See the bygone years that throng heaven's balconies, See smiling sorrow, strong in fortitude, rise from the waters. See the dying sun, low sinking, disappear beyond the verge. The rustling mystery of night approaches. Here, beloved, here. From the French of Baudelaire. End of poem. Section 17 of Mice and Other Poems by Gerald Bullitt. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by John Burlinson. The Poet. Where the flowers are most tall, heedless of his mother's call, wooden sword in his hand, tightly clasped, I see him stand. His pondering with eyes full of four-year-old surmise, Two great hollyhocks that sway this way, that way, Till they almost touch his cheek. Queer, solemn souls they seem, Spellbound, lost in dream, Always just about to speak. Then he with thirsty eyes Drinks the intoxicating skies, Done with earth, he bestrides the galloping white horses, rides the blue valleys and the red hills of sunset, and his pocket fills with golden apples. Days pass, long, full days. The grass suddenly stirs, and he plunges into the perilous wood and lunges stoutly at the dragon's head till the fiery beast is dead. Now that dusk is fast falling, he'll obey his mother's calling. Out of fairyland, with slow, thoughtful steps, he turns to go. Yet there's just time to float in the water butt, his boat made of cork and spent matches. So at the last he snatches great adventure from the dread, unrelenting jaws of bed. Round the magic world rides he, and lives a breathless odyssey. End of poem. Section 18 of Mice and Other Poems by Gerald Bullitt. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by John Burlinson. If All the Trees Were Magic Trees If all the trees were magic trees, and talked among themselves, If kings could sleep in daffodils, and bishops danced on window sills, if all the valleys changed to hills, and all the tens to twelves, the world would be nonsensical, and we should all be elves. If every street in Camden Town 
were paved with precious stones. If modest souls began to drape their table legs in decent crepe, if every squirrel wore a cape and had the name of Jones, I'd weave a robe of beetles' eyes and jellyfish's bones. If king cups blossomed in the sky and fell like golden rain, in gray half-light shot through and through with shafts of green and shafts of blue, if pink and purple chickweed grew on every window-pane, all truly tidy folk would deem the universe insane. If we were sensible enough to hear the bluebells ring, were sight so true and hearts so wise that we could see with glowing eyes enchantment flaming from the skies and joy in everything, then every girl a queen would be and every boy a king. End of poem. Section 19 of Mice and Other Poems by Gerald Bullet. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by John Burlinson. Alone with these my poems. Alone with these my poems, when night is still, Earth seems but a speck of fluttering dust, Moth-like, in a waste of eternity. Alone with these symbols of human thought, All our measureless system of whirling worlds Seems itself a symbol, a chance phrase In a poem wrought by the hand of a brooding god, where we ourselves are less than commas and dots. And had he smeared out with careless thumb all life, from its first birth in the waters to the ultimate dissolution of stars and suns, he had made no more than an ill-timed cesura. Alone with these my poems, when night is still, I am less than a speck of dust on the wing of a moth, fluttering in a waste of eternity. End of poem. End of Mice and Other Poems by Gerald Bullitt.